The first line of defense against all kind of microorganisms is physical barriers. Physical barriers are the epithelial surfaces of the body and are usually found covering the skin and the internal lining membranes of different tracts such as the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urinogenital tracts. One condition that is needed for infection to occur is that microorganisms such as viruses or bacteria can cross through these barriers and get inside our body. In the case of the skin, the skin is an external barrier and has multiple dry protective layers, which makes it a more formidable barrier compared to internal lining membranes. However, when someone is wounded or burned, the risk of them getting infected is higher because the external skin barrier is breached. Since microorganism usually enters our body through the internal epithelial surfaces, our internal membranes have different mechanisms to protect themselves from infections. These internal barriers can be categorized into mechanical, chemical, and microbiological barriers. An example of the mechanical barrier is the lining of the mucous membrane in the respiratory system that secretes mucus. Mucus contains many glycoproteins called mucins. The mucus traps microorganisms which prevent them to attach to our epithelial cells. Also in the respiratory system, there is hair-like structures called cilia that line the mucous membrane and move the particles trapped in the mucus out of the nose. Our surface of epithelia is more than a mechanical barrier to infections. They also secrete many enzymes and proteins that work as a chemical barrier and inhibit microbial growth. For example, antibacterial enzyme lysozyme is secreted in tears and saliva. Other examples of the chemical barrier are the acids in the stomach and the digestive enzymes of the upper gastrointestinal tract that can deal with microorganisms in food and water. In addition to these defenses, most epithelial surfaces are associated with a normal floor of beneficial bacteria that don't cause any diseases and compete with bad microorganisms for nutrients and for attachment sites on our cells. The normal flora can also produce antimicrobial proteins, such as colicins that prevent colonization by other bacteria. That's why when good bacteria are killed by antibiotic treatments, bad microorganisms frequently replace them and cause diseases. Only if the bad microorganisms were strong to breach these barriers, the innate immune system gets turned on to fight. 